Scott Lane, uh, I'm a local business owner and musician in this town. I'm here to say that I'm against erasing history in Richmond. Instead, I want to show my support for Mayor Stoney and adding context to the monuments and tell the real history that has truly been erased from many of our upbringings here in Richmond. I grew up here, went to private school where our literary program was divided into two teams of Lee's and Jackson's Confederate flags were not only accepted socially, but also carried a certain cool factor. As a teenager, I only knew that side of the argument, and when I went out into the world and spent time in over 40 states as a traveling musician, I saw the very real pain that such symbolism can cause. It, it occurred to me that it isn't about one's right to display these symbols, that right is protected and not under threat. What is under threat is the perception of you as an individual you are ill thought of because of the heroes and symbolism that you choose to ce celebrate, and it is the public's right to do so. Just like the flags, etc., the people immortalized and cast in monuments here in Richmond, many of them carry the same weight because of the choices that they made in their lives. It is imperative that we make a good decision about what values we are promoting and that we are listening to all sides of the debate. Erasing history is bad, and history has surely shown itself, has been shown to repeat itself. I believe we should share the true history of all these people, not just the honorable, for instance, General Lee, but also the General Lee who said, that African Americans, quote, have neither the intelligence nor other qualifications which is necessary to make, so, to make them safe depositories of political power. I think this goes for heroes on both sides of the Civil War and all figures of history. We must provide context for the next generation and avoid the blind glorification of very human people. Many historic fig historical figures who greatly shape this world we live in have done inhumane things. We must provide context and education lay out all the facts so that Richmonders, future generations, and the rest of the world presently can make their own judgments about these people on Monument Avenue. So I support adding, adding contextual information in front of the statues. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have our next speaker. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Dr. Ayers goes spiders. The first is, I'll look at what's happening over the road up in Charlottesville, and I'm devastated. I know on Saturday they're going to have one of those rallies, and I don't want any of that, regardless of anyone's views here, infiltrating Richmond. And I would hope that only the least gracious among us would disagree with that. So we're still posed the question, what do we do? And I know some folks are very strongly going to say that there should be no context added. I see signs, that's fine. I know there are a whole lot of other folks who probably say just tear them down. The only thing I can go on based on what I see in Charlottesville is that you go to one of those two conclusions, people are going to be angry. And we can do as much as we want to resolve these issues, but you can't change what's in people's hearts. So with that in mind, I wish I had something more practical to say. But the only thing I've come up so far is that what we have is what we have. And one way that we can contextualize it is to say whether you think it was a wonderful cause, a lost cause, any sort of cause, is to acknowledge that it happened and to acknowledge that it was about slavery, and to acknowledge that that side lost. Guys, I'm going to say something right off the top. This is not a popularity contest. This is not a, um, we're not here at a, uh, uh, this is not a reality show. It's not going to influence us how many people clap for you. So let's, let's keep, tamp, keep that tamp down a little bit, okay? So anyway, with that, where I was, was I'll just conclude by saying, let's provide that context, and let's take it at the top of the monument, uh, at the top of the avenue, rather, and say, and talk about the Civil War. Talk about a plaque or other informative context, what the war was about. And then otherwise, I'd say that could be the context. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our next speaker. Hi, my name is Cheryl Baldwin, and I live within walking distance here, and like the statues on Monument Avenue, my house also has one of these historic landmark plaques. And so one thing about the monuments is that they are nationally registered historic landmarks. So there would be legal fights as well as the community division if we tried to go about really moving them. I like the idea of adding context, historical plates, Ideally, in my view, where the statue of Jefferson Davis is, which, because he was never a Virginian anyway, and tried to continue the war after Lee had sensibly surrendered. 
<laughs> now, what I also believe is that in addition to the historical plates to be added, I would support, and I believe we could raise money to get, so it wouldn't cost the city anything, a statue of Douglas Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let her speak, please. Thank you. That was such an important moment when he was elected governor and losing that completes our journey. So I feel like that's historically important. And he would, I mean, it sort of completes the story of Virginia when Doug Wilder was elected governor. So I think we should add his statue. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to call a few more numbers so people can speak. Williamsburg, Virginia, and uh, my Aunt Patty and Uncle Tom lived here, and I visited them all my life, uh, saw the monuments and everything. Uh, I, I think it's a mistake to do, any, to do anything to these monuments. I believe it's a sacrilege. These monuments are to commemorate our honored dead, not to intimidate anyone. I would request that the uh, Confederate soldiers that are honored around the world, even in the North, surely they should be honored here. Uh, they should not be the only veterans in our history not honored. Uh, I believe desecration of these monuments will increase racial strife, not listen it. I, 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 under, I don't understand the mayor's uh, route on this because I've been told by numerous people that these monuments are on state land he can't touch them, so I don't know why we're going through this drill. But anyway, uh, I, I would request that the Blue Ribbon Commission not be run as an African American 101 class, but be run with all opinions from all sides. Uh, blacks as well as whites have their access to crime. I, I believe that the recognition of Confederate blacks is way overdue. The Confederate Army and the Confederacy could not have continued let alone existed without them. Uh, one such uh, private is Dick Poplar from Petersburg, from the uh, 13th Virginia Cavalry. He chose, he was captured at Gettysburg, and he chose to remain interred at Point Lookout for 20 months to be with his friends rather than taking the oath of allegiance. And Fort Lookout was almost as bad as Andersonville. I do not believe Let's, let's pay attention to our time, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, thank, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. My Good evening. Is I am a native Virginian. I'm a homeowner here and a taxpayer. I stand here on the backs of my ancestors who helped build Virginia. However, I do not see that reflected on Monument Avenue. And I don't think oppress anyone that wants to oppress a particular group. There's nothing heroic about it. The context that should have started should have been in school when we were not given the accurate history. And that's where the context should start. Not on the monuments that are present. <coughs> they should go down. There's nothing heroic about it. And it's painful to this day. And I was not born back then. And it still hurts because that oppression continues to trickle down generational. So Virginia has a debt to pay, and we wait. Thank you very much. Good evening. Monuments have been around since the beginning of time. Monuments are created to help us to remember a person or an event. They are part of public history, public art, and there's money for tourism. Oh, by the way, my name is Teresa Rome. However, if you plan to contextualize these monuments, and since everyone thinks it's about white supremacy and perpetuation of slavery, then will you explain the fact that Lee freed the slaves at Arlington Roman Coat in White House on December 29, 1862, which had force of law, unlike the Pro Emancipation Proclamation, which was merely a war measure that freed no slave. When you talk about the fact that General Thomas Stonewall Jackson broke Virginia's law, by having a Sunday school for slaves and free blacks, which he continued to finance, support during the war, where you mentioned that the Davis family had a unique relationship with people of color, the Davis household was run by free black slaves and immigrants, 
And after the war, the people of color corresponded with the Davis family. One man who was described himself as a free Indian Negro was Davis' coachman and valet. After Jefferson Davis' death, his wife, Marina Davis, gave him one of his walking sticks. On the silver band, it was inscribed to my friend, James Jones. Today, that cane can be found in the North Carolina Museum of History. In my hands are copies of letters. One is a condolence letter from the ex-slaves to Marina Davis over the death of her husband, Jefferson Davis. Another is a letter from a businessman of color. He was an ex-slave on Joseph Davis' plantation. There are more letters, and unfortunately, they are not available due to the closure of the archives at the former Museum of the Confederacy, now known as the American Civil War Museum. Now, history is complex. Where will it end? Perhaps it should end at the Lincoln Monument at Georgia. I would like to see a sign that explains that the Emancipation Proclamation freed not one slave, and that perhaps we should explain the fact that Lincoln wanted every person of African descent removed from this country and colonized elsewhere. So please, so please stop the madness. Yeah, I think we're we've reached okay. time. Thank you, Regent. My name is George Saunders. Um, Forty years ago, I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina and Richmond at that time were considered sister cities, very, very similar in demographics, population, all that sort of thing. Very, very similar. Fast forward 40 years, Charlotte, North Carolina has an NFL team, has had two NBA teams, or probably they have an NHL team, Tomorrow morning, the best golfers in the world will tee up for the BGA Championship. They have the uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame. It's a world banking center. It's a world investment center. I think the difference for Richmond is a lack of leadership. And the real question is, do we need to have this debate in the first place? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My, Good evening. Name, my name is Rita Willis. I hadn't come here to speak, um, but when I saw the longer line, I said, let me get a short line. <laughs> but um, when I came in, uh, it was overwhelming. Uh, I'm a former educator at Richmond Public Schools, 33 years. And um, in listening to and reading about all of this, um, The notes that I wrote a second ago is the past is the past. We cannot remove it, and we cannot move forward if we stay in the past. If we asked a lot of all of you to acknowledge your faith, I think a lot of us would raise our hand that I believe in something. And so I think that's, that's one of those things um, that we need to hold on to. And coupled with that is hope and moving forward. You, for those of you who want it removed, the statues removed, I understand your pain. But that's not the right thing to do. For those of you who want to keep it there, I understand that as well. But to continue moving forward, we just need to, to, to find a way to, um, to be inclusive. That's, that's what's missing in our society. Making sure that people are included. So to do that, and you know one thing that we fail to ask somebody? Our children. We underestimate our children sometimes and listen to them as an educator to get them to draw pictures or to discuss among themselves. We can learn a lot from children. Yeah. Okay, I'm summarizing. So my suggestion is to uh, keep, to add to the monuments. Do not take them down, no, that's history. But to continue to add um, other races and other ethnicities to what's already there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
My name is Ronnie Swiderski. I live in Hamilton, Virginia. Uh, my first uh, maternal ancestors came from England to Westmoreland County in the early 16th, 17th century. But on my father's side, they were here before anybody. They were Cherokee from Carolina, Georgia, and they, of course, took that trail of tears to Indian country and ended up in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, where my Confederate ancestors became a part of the Cherokee Nation that fought with Stan Wati, who was the last general to stop fighting. Now, to generalize that all of the Confederacy was something about white supremacy is disingenuous. My grandmother, her name was Mary Adair Cochran, and she became an Okie, leaving Oklahoma during after the Dust Bowl there and going to California, <coughs> and uh, becoming an itinerant ranch hand with she and her husband. They never escaped the poverty after the war. They never had anything. My mother said when she met my grandmother, she was frying bread for supper. Now, uh, I just want to point out, I don't know look like some nice white lady from uh, Hampton, but I too am a mixed blood. And I just think if you're gonna include everything about the Confederacy, you need to include those people of minorities who fought as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Slavery was bad. No one questions that, but Virginia didn't fight for slavery. Virginia didn't leave until after Lincoln called the to the South. Lincoln did get rid of slavery, and that was a good thing, but he didn't do it for democracy. He did it for killing people until the fifth of the military age males of the South were dead. This is all good slavery went. It's bad how it happened. This all needs to be addressed. This all needs to be part of the discussion. If you tear down these statues, you're not discussing, you're suppressing the side of ending conversation. Society is founded on conversating, on resolving your differences and things. When you fail to do that, that's when you have things like the Civil War. Ultimately, I'm not sure if those statues need any context. There's already so much conversation happening about it, but I would much rather see there be context than say what's going on in Charlottesville. The whole purpose of a government is to maintain peace between its constituents. Richmond would not be doing that if you tried to take down statues. There would be lawsuits, there would be riots. I don't want there to be, but based on what's happening in Charlotte, or Charlottesville, and how much more important Richmond is, I just can't see not happening. <laughs> Why would we throw money away at raising civil discord, reducing the artistic equity of our city? What sane society would invest in its own dismissal? That's all I have. Thank you, sir. My name is Peter Witt. I'm a resident of Richmond. Um, I'll be very brief. I think the statues on Monument Avenue will put up to honor the dead, the people who fought for Virginia, and the people who put them up, paid for them. They created an avenue that is uh, loved and uh, honored. I think that putting context is dishonoring to the mind. It is I, I mostly agree with the, the, the school teacher who said she she thought uh, the boulevard would be a good place to set it up to have other monuments uh, for people who are uh, appreciated today rather than telling people what to think of the monuments that are already there. I have my opinions of, of those people. I know they were uh, fallible people, 
nine is righteous, not one. And I think uh, we should leave them as they are, without adding anything to uh, disturb that. I would just add that the Lee Monument now is actually, I call it the Lee, uh, not the Lee, Lee Circle, but the Circle of Traffic Sign. <laughs> because that's all you see when you go by. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. This uh, convening this event. Uh, my name is Krista Pierpont. I am a descendant of the Morgan Pierpont family of West Virginia. I currently live in Fishersville, Virginia. I'm a career public school educator in both Virginia and West Virginia. I have presentation materials to leave with you. Uh, I'd like to give it to one of your staff people, one for each commission member. In there is the information about Virginia's great divorce, which has to do with the reasons why West Virginia was created. I have information on the April 4th, 1861 secession decision, West Virginia Civil War trails brochures, and a book that I, of information I found at the Library of Virginia which is in his own words, two autobiographies written by Virginia Governor Francis Harrison Pierpont, the longest serving loyal governor of Virginia between 1861 and 1868. He's also credited as the father of West Virginia. I would like to formally request that the Monument Avenue Commission provide for support and a location for a one-day symposium on two matters. One, to discuss Virginia's great divorce, and a second, to debate between loyal Virginia Governor Pierpont and Virginia Co Confederate Governor William Smith, just to uh, make public some of the arguments between the two governors, Virginia had two governors. I think it could be quite informative. Uh, to that end, I would ask that the event take place in April of next year, which would be the 150th anniversary of the end of Governor Pierpont's tenure in Richmond as governor. I would offer help to organize the event and assist in its direction and follow up with any recommendations with add, add context Thank to you. this talk. Thank you, ma'am. Short night. There's been a lot of talk tonight about Charlottesville, where neo-Nazis, neo-fascists, and all sorts of other horrible and disgusting individuals will be meeting. And every, there are people here who say, we need to avoid that by placating them, by leaving these monuments to white supremacy and racism still standing. When we say, we can avoid what's going on in Charlottesville by just Letting the statues stay up. We're just saying, I'm too much of a coward to stand up to white supremacy, to stand up to racism. Now is the time to finally take a stand for once and show backbone and stand up to white supremacy. Now is the time to dismantle the monuments and dismantle white supremacy as a whole and dismantle racism. Now is the time to finally get rid of the monuments and replace them with monuments to people who actually fought for freedom, who actually stood for justice, not people who stood to own other individuals as property. Now is the time for us to finally put the past in the past and tear down participation trophies for the losing side of a war. You lost! Get over it already! Get rid of your participation trophies on Monument Avenue. Get rid of your...
racism, or white supremacy. This is what it was dedicated to from the speech given when it was dedicated. Yeah, be respectful. The Stewart Monument stands as a visible and proud proof of our determination not to break faith with the dead. The Jefferson Davis Monument commemorates the Confederate cause, which is, by the way, the sovereignty of states against federal aggression and power and the principle of home rule against outside illegal interference. I've got all of these, all of the monuments on Monument Avenue on this card. If anybody wants a copy of this card, I'd be happy to give it to them. The second question, what additional statues would you like to see? Well, none on Monument Avenue. There's an entire rest of the city to add statues to whatever you so choose to do. Monument Avenue is a Confederate memorial in and of itself. And I do not want to see any monuments on there from any of them low down and big murder and rape and loot and burning heathens from the north. Sir, I'll say the same thing I said to the earlier gentleman. I support the monuments, but remember, I'm a Yankee, veteran, and transgender. Thank you. Again, we don't we don't need we don't need that, okay, sir? Monuments are clear when they were put up. They right. stand as they are there. Thank you. Thank you. I want to tell you, Monument Avenue, History and Architecture, Codex HADS 2, Figure 3, Monument Avenue, in relation to the Capitol Square, Richmond Center, children remember for years pulling the Jefferson Davis statue. My maternal grandfather was Eugene Haley, born July 20, 1898. He was one of the many children who helped pull the Jefferson Davis Monument, which was unveiled on June 3rd, 1907. Jefferson Davis' birthday was June 3rd, 1808. My grandfather had two Confederate grandfathers, James Madison Haley, 14th Virginia Infantry, Company C, and James Fleming Moss, 23rd Virginia Infantry, Company A, and Louisa Rifles. My grandfather and his grandfather, Matthew Fontaine, Maury, Robert E. Lee, Jeff Stewart, Thomas Stonewall Jackson and President Jefferson Davis are all honorable men. Maury, Lee, Stuart Jackson and Davis all deserve to be forevermore on Monument <laughs> Avenue. Richmond is now and forevermore the capital of the Confederacy and home to my grandfather who helped build it and his grandfathers, Confederate grandfathers, who farmed it and defended it. Yes, they farmed it. As a 21st century elected official, people would like to see taxpayers' money go to matters of real concern like infrastructure and protection from modern day terror attacks. I'll say on behalf of my maternal grandfather and his two Confederate grandfathers, leave our hard work and our history and our monuments alone. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set, Proverbs 22:28. Nobody publicly contextualizes or judges Maggie Walker, Arthur Ashe, or the Lincoln Monuments in Richmond. Because they didn't you, own people. Who are you to publicly contextualize your judge? Maury, Lee, Stuart Jackson, and President Davis Monument. Thank you. Thank you. African Americans who served in the Union Army. Uh, this would be in keeping with the historical nature of Monument Avenue. It would add context and it would educate people in Richmond and elsewhere as to a very important fact that is not widely known. That is the magnitude of the number of African Americans who said, served in the Union Army. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving us time tonight. Um, I'd like to note about these two questions beforehand. If I did, I would have But anyway. Removing or changing the monument statues on Monument Avenue would be removing or changing history. Since 1914, these grand artistic works have graced Monument Avenue. Can we forget the suffering of the Confederate Army, who fought so gallantly, and the 258,000 Confederate soldiers who lost their lives for a cause they believed in? Yes. Let's remember, too, that Lee fought in the Mexican War for America and was superintendent of West Point. Lincoln asked Lee to fight for the North. He did not go to war for the South until Virginia succeeded. Virginia was his first and only thought. After the war, he became president of Washington Lee University, and he did all he could to help reconcile and rebuild relationships between North and South. How can anyone say this great leader is a symbol of hate and evil and white supremacy? 
These Confederate generals should be honored, not looked upon as a symbol of slavery and racism. We should not copy what other cities have done. France built and gave us the Statue of Lee. Everyone in Virginia owns the Lee Statue. The citizens of Richmond raised the money for the other Confederate general statues. So all who live in Richmond own these statues. This is the heart and soul of Richmond. As an owner, I do not want any changes to be made. Only the ignorant, uneducated people will look upon these statues as a hate racist symbol. This has been a national landmark for 127 years and $1.7 billion tourism industry. If Mayor Stoney has his way with the added contact, I hope it will be a beautiful plaque and not mar or degrade these bigger than life historic statues which represent our heritage. It indicates that the United States was formed on a social contract, therefore making the Constitution of the United States a social contract in which when states joined, they gave up certain rights to increase the, the ability of the sovereign, being the federal government, to provide for their common welfare and general defense. Article 5 of the United States Constitution allowed for secession when three quarters of both houses of Congress approve it. When you study the Articles of Confederation, even the Articles of Confederation requires a state to come before the Confederate Congress assemble and request permission to succeed from the Confederation. Article 3, Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution, as framed in 1787, as is now, states clearly that treason against the United States of America should consist only in levying war against them or adhering to and providing aid and comfort to the enemy. Therefore, legally, the southern states could not succeed from the Union without first appearing before Congress and receiving three-quarters of approval for secession. Secondly, we have had a war on terrorism for the last 16 years, and to be found guilty of terrorism in the United States, you have to violate Article 3, Section 3 of the United States Constitution that has been unchanged since 1787 in its wording. When we further examine the historical record, what we know is that the Confederacy adopted the United States of America Constitution made 11 changes to it, I believe. Six or seven addressed the issue of slavery in which one made slavery perpetual and illegal to pass or submit any law to ban slavery. Therefore, presently, we are sitting here as our armed forces are deployed all over the world in harm's way, debating should we remove statues of domestic terrorists where the primary source and the secondary source clearly identified as guilty of treason. I'm Mary Southworth. I've lived in Richmond. I'm not a Richmonder. I've only been here for 43 years. Uh, Richmond, I did marry a Richmond boy. Richmond and the state of Virginia occupy a unique place in the history of our country. And therefore, we have a unique opportunity to set an example. There are always options for those with the audacity to channel the better angels of our nature with appreciation to the president who was sitting in 1861. We can champion exclusion and focus on ourselves. Or we can champion inclusion with our fellow Richmonders and Virginians and focus on union and unification. The reality of union and unification is a lofty and long sought aspiration. Out of reach, as it seems, it is always sparkling just around the corner for those who see the glimmer and have the audacity to ferret it out. Exactly because 
of the unique place which Richmond, Virginia occupies in the history of our country. Richmond is geographically, literally, and figuratively positioned to provide the nation with a shining, yes, sparkling like fireworks on the 4th of July, shining example of unification, the power of which cannot be matched anywhere else in our national consciousness. Thank you. Thank you. Resident of Richmond all my life, and that's getting to be a long time ago. I think we have a wonderful opportunity, and we've touched on this tonight, and I'm just backing up our, my four doors here and said the same thing. We have a wonderful opportunity to show the whole country, maybe the whole world, how we can compromise and make things work together. Uh, the foundation of our problem is obviously an emotional one, and it's based on each of, uh, each of our individual experiences. And I'm as Southern as you can get. And I loved Moss Robin, and I still do. That's our name for Robert E. Lee. And it breaks my heart to see him so slandered and so maligned. On the other hand, I appreciate how black people in particular are so bitter and upset about the situation. I understand that. I really do. And they have been mistreated. And we need to do something about it. But maybe we can heal this thing. It's not easy, but maybe we can do it, I think, by saying, I'd like to see us keep Monument Avenue just as it is, but add one more statue, statue, and that would be to the black Confederates who served in the Confederate Army. And there were many. And that's always overlooked. But they were there, and if you check the records, you will see that that's true. And then I would like to follow the suggestion of the lady who said, let's have a boulevard set of statues. And we, we have so many wonderful characters in Richmond. My gosh, we could put one at every street corner. But if we did, did have a separate boulevard uh, to honor any Virginian who deserved to be on there, of any period and any occupation or whatever, think of the, the drawing card that would be for the city of Richmond. People come from all over the world to see Monument Avenue as it is today. And the city is cutting off its nose to spite its, uh, its face, face uh, to even think about tampering with the monuments. But if we add this other one set to it and put the black Confederates up, I think we'd have a wonderful compromise, and I urge us to do that. Thank you. Um, my name is Nancy Weed, and I am a member of Coming to the Table RVA, which is an interracial healing group where sons and daughters of slaves sit at the table with sons and daughters of slave owners and have open, honest conversations regarding the legacy, the legacy and aftermath of slavery. We do this in four ways. By facing history openly and honestly, by connecting on a personal level with each other, by exploring how we can heal the wounds that have been festering, and by taking direct action towards racial reconciliation. In the past few months, we've been sitting around the table discussing the issue of the Monument Avenue monuments and the events unfolding in Charlottesville. I have a long way to go on my own personal journey. These conversations and commitments take time. But one thing I have learned is that in spite of the fact that technically I am not the daughter of slave owners, in every other sense, I am. Simply because I live a privileged white life and I have for many years thought that racism was not a problem for me. Through my membership in coming to the table, I've come to understand that while slavery became illegal 150 years ago in our country, its legacy continues. Uh, let me go quicker. I think it is difficult for white Americans to comprehend the effect of these statues on Monument Avenue. Simply put, some signage just doesn't cut it. There would still be a constant reminder of the era of slavery and the war which was waged to perpetuate these atrocities. We must remove them, put them in a museum where they belong, and replace them with images of people who made our city and state great. And that is not enough. 
we must come together as a community and work as one. First of all, we're talking about this issue of the monuments, and we're talking about the issue of slavery and these things, and we like just sweeping right across them and not really getting into the whole concept and ideas of what we're really talking about. But if you would just think back, if you would even just close your eyes for a second and try to think what it was like during those times, because when I see the monuments, I just go back. I go back to that time period, just for a few minutes, I go back. And some people go back and celebrate, and some people go back and they think about the things that were taking place. Things like, I mean, human beings were treated worse than dogs. You have never heard of nobody tying up their dog by, four, by their four limbs and tying up the trees and, and hitting a, a, a knife, take a knife and hit a rope and bust the, bust the dog into four pieces. Where you heard of that at? But that's what was happening to human beings in this state. These are the things that slavery was invested in, these type of activities, to intimidate and to try to keep people docile. But people today sit here like it's okay to even think about this type of stuff, but it's not okay to me. It's not okay for me to think about how women were just raped, even by all the great generals having children, the presidents also, but they, they rape women, and they torture men and women. They cut babies out of women's stomachs. They try to intimidate and torture, yes, on a regular. Those type of things is what happened. And people just was going along, people. A lot of people ain't like it, but they didn't, it was like on a treadmill and just kept going along, act like they didn't see it, and then change it, try to change it. I'm asking for y'all to have courage these days and times. Step off the treadmill, and when you see something wrong, speak on it. All right, sir. Thank you. I uh, have lived in many places, Atlanta, uh, St. Louis, Boston. I moved here from Boston. I lived in the Army when I was in the Army in uh, Belgium and in Germany. And let me tell you, Richmond is my favorite place. Uh, I love Richmond. I've lived on Monument Avenue for five years, and I've lived in the fan for ten years. And you know, I have, I have no defense of slavery. I think slavery was wrong. Uh, one of the reasons I left Georgia was uh, Jim Crowism. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I can't stand it. On the other hand, I think that um, this has become sort of a divisive political issue, which was introduced by the mayor. And I, I really think that uh, we don't need to be like Baltimore, where they have race riots and burn down uh, buildings. We need to keep Richmond a, a place where the races can, can get along together. Uh, I was a trauma surgeon at MCV for 32 years, and we took care of everybody, uh, regardless of race, color, or creed. And I was very proud of that. Um, the best compliment I ever got was from a Middle Eastern woman, a Muslim, who said, Dr. Kellum treats everybody the same. That's the best compliment I've ever received in my life. So I hope that we can uh, be civil and keep the monuments. If you want to add additional monuments on Monument Avenue, I have no problem with that. Uh, but I'd like to keep Richmond the way it is. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Richmond, but I'm not a Richmonder. I was born in Norfolk, and I currently reside in Virginia Beach. I've heard so much here tonight, I don't know how to respond to all of it. Obviously, I don't have enough time to do that. Let me try to respond to a couple of things. I've seen prototypes, type signs they want to put on these monuments, and they're not nice little signs about different views. They are as nasty and racist and vile to some of the people I've heard here tonight, especially just a couple minutes ago. If you want to put true history on historic markers, that's one thing. But they're talking opinion, not history. Now, I'm a proud Virginian, like General Lee, not proud of E.D., like more seriously, George Washington's, one of his generals said, his son Robert, Virginia is my country. You know, 
some of the original rebels and traitors and people who went against their government. I heard about that just a moment ago. You knew who they were? George Washington, Patrick Henry, Thomas Jefferson, those scoundrels who went against King George the Third. Should we go and take down everything about them? Yes. How about this building? How about this building? The first hundred thousand dollars to this society was given by a Confederate soldier. Did we bulldoze this building or put a big sign out the building of racist? It's ridiculous. I'm very well aware of what's going on in Charlottesville. Let me tell you. Yes, there are bad people, and I think they're bad, like the Klan and the all fight. But there's bad people from the other side there, too. There's extremists from both sides. I went to a meeting like this in Norfolk. It lasted one evening. The city council, we have a monument there, too. Nothing like Monument Avenue, but we have a better monument. They voted. It's history. Leave it like it is. It's two years ago. We don't have the Klan, Aldeba, anybody else coming that city, it was over. I think that's the best way to resolve it. Leave it like it is and move on. Thank you. Amen. I've lived my entire life in Clay High for 30 years here in Richmond. Uh, for the past 10 years, I have been a part-time tour guide to Richmond. A lot of people that come to Richmond, I am the face of Richmond that they see. And every single tourist that comes to Richmond wants to see Monument Avenue. They do not want to see a politically correct Monument Avenue. Now, I don't think anybody in here will disagree when I say we live in one of the greatest countries in the world. And what makes us great is our diversity, our willingness to accept the differences and the, of each other's culture, and allowing everybody to honor their ancestors and where it came from, except when it comes to Confederates. When it comes to Confederates, there is all I hear is discrimination. I look up here at this council now, and I see you have no moral guidance, no heart, okay? I see a bunch of historians and people that uh, are picking and choosing history, not telling a full history. I, as the former Virginia Division Commander of the Sons of Confederate Veterans and a National Officer of the Sons of Confederate Veterans for four years, hereby denounced the Ku Klux Klan and any hate racist organization. They do not represent anybody with Confederate ancestors. I'm the only person in this room that was invited to go to Switzerland to speak at an international peace conference on race and social relations representing Confederate history. I think you need some moral guidance on this council. I think you need members of the Sons of Confederate Veterans and the United Daughters of the Confederacy on this council. I have my resume in my pocket, which I'm happy to submit to you to become a member of this council. The only thing left I will say, final thing I will say, is the only thing that will solve this is dialogue. And that is what I've been. I have reached out to African uh, Americans, to black churches, explaining to them why we honor our Confederate ancestors. It's a matter of family. Okay? Please, thank you. So I need to rush through this. Um, I just want to say that uh, these monuments were installed well after the Civil War in celebration of slave owning warmongers. They were never intended for historical education. They are quite literally the opposite of accurate historical education, as they are celebrations of genocide of African people that barely touches on the actual genocide that was American slavery and a slavery that continues to today pursuant the 13th Amendment in our prisons. I've done, a lot of work, I've done a lot of work having to undo the ridiculous and romanticized BS history that I was taught in Richmond Public Schools. We don't even have a U.S. slavery museum, but we keep mentioning the Civil War Museum. It's pathetic. Um, these, monuments are, these monuments are atrocities. They're celebrations of torture and death, and we should be replaced immediately with people like Nat Turner Gabriel Crosser. I'll wait, but I'm going to go over them. I'll wait, I'll go over them. Um, Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, and John Brown, who were brave enough to revolt against the rich slave owning black. For those of you suggesting that because black and brown fought, folks fought in a war that 
fought in the war and it was therefore not about slavery or white supremacy, you are, are willfully ignoring complexities and realities the POC are lied to and tricked to, just like us, to be used as pawns of white supremacy. The most embarrassing part of all of this is my fellow white folks that fell, fell and continue to fall for a con job. You were duped into turning your backs on black and indigenous and brown folks, and it's still working today. The ruling class tricked you all into fighting wars for them, and they don't never cared about you, and they still don't. Their infantry didn't. The infantry in Virginia didn't fight for Virginia. They fought for bratty rich kids, and they still do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, be quiet. First of all, it's not your job to call time on anybody. But you, if you are over your time. Sure. <laughs> but I, I got interrupted too many times. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I oh, hope please, to see you all in support of solidarity with black and brown folks in Charlottesville. Well, neo Nazis are going to be there on Saturday. We're over the fence straddling. You have to choose a side. Liberals, that goes to you. Come out and join us because they're going to be a neo Nazi. Texas. And I'm not related. I'm a recently retired Army Colonel after 30 years of service and a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point and the Army War College. I had the opportunity, the great honor and opportunity to command our nation's young men and women in multiple uh, opportunities, both deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan, including a battalion from Fort Lee, which I commanded during Operation New Dawn in Iraq. And this battalion, I might mind you, was made up of all races, all genders, and all religions. And I led them honorably, and I was proud of every single one of them. One thing that my journeys have given me the opportunity to do in my, my service is to thank God every day that I have read history. And I understand the history of this nation. And I would challenge each of you to do the same thing. Because it is important for you to know that this is a very slippery slope that we walk behind when we want to look at these statues and try to put them in context. I submit to you that there is only one context, and that is the context of history. It should be important for each of you to know that slavery existed in this country for 89 years, all the way to 1865. And what that means is, is that almost a million people remained in bondage in Union states all the way until 1865. 13 of the first 15 presidents, including all seven from Virginia, were slave owners. So are we to look at their statues as well when we go to the Capitol grounds, when we look at George Washington, when we look at Thomas Jefferson, when we look at James Madison? And I might add as well that the that the 17th and 18th president also had been slave owners. Andrew Johnson, who had been Lincoln's vice president, as well as, yes, Ulysses S. Grant. Now, how many of you have actually understood and read and know that? Because it is a fact, and it is history. The Crittenden-Johnson resolution passed by the United States Senate, by the United States Congress, only days after the Battle of First Bull Run in 1861 specifically stated that the Union was fighting for the reunification of the states and not to end slavery. Someone else spoke in here and pointed out the Emancipation Proclamation did not free a single slave and more specifically the hypocrisy of it was is that it did not apply to a single slave in Union states. But stay on the point. Not one. Sir, I, th I think your your time is probably. Yeah, I, just, I do have some monuments that I would like to recommend because, quite frankly, historical context is very important, and the historical context can be summarized by this. I recommend that there be a statue in Richmond to the over a dozen African American Medal of Honor winners who earned the Medal of Honor during the battles in and around uh, Petersburg, the Siege of Petersburg. I recommend a statue to General George Thomas of Virginia, who sided with the Union and became known as the Robert Hi, Jesus Hunt. Christ! The women who... <laughs> Sir. Hey, y'all cut me off and he's way over time! Yeah, you're over time, sir. Sit down, Jesus! I'll start yelling and my people are here. Sit down! Sit down! Sit down!
we are seeking the support of this commission, the mayor, and the community to stand up the following Darius Monument. We believe the best way to add context to Monument Avenue is by honoring our best on Monument Avenue. The following Heroes Monument pays tribute to area citizens who made the ultimate sacrifice in foreign wars. This structure, like the people it represents, is inclusive of all races, all genders, and all backgrounds. It symbolizes neither politics nor social statement, but rather a patriotic legacy built by generations of returners who have time and again answered our country's call to defend our freedom from the likes of tyranny, oppression, and terrorism. There are community memorials like this in towns across Virginia. The Roanoke Valley War Memorial, the Tidewater Veterans Memorial, the Fredericksburg Area War Memorial, the Danville Veterans Memorial, and others. It is time for us, as Richmonders, to honor our town's fallen heroes with its own unique symbol. With Monument Avenue, we have the opportunity to honor these heroes in a distinctly Richmond way. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It has to be grounded in the truth. So if you're interested in putting context with the monuments, then I would suggest that unless you want a travesty, that context has to be the truth. Otherwise, we want to run the risk of having monuments designed to tell people what to think when we want an educated population of people who know how to think. Uh, we're trying to tell people what to think. We want to run the risk of totalitarianism, of big brotherism, of authoritarianism, of brainwashing people. And I am sure none of us want that. My other purpose in talking with you tonight may sound initially to be somewhat counterintuitive, but please, if you will, bear with me as long as time presents. And that's to have us think of the statutes on Monument Avenue as really as shrines to a vision of society, a vision of society which I think all of us here, each and every one of us here, hold dear and true. That is, we should look at these monuments as shrines to universal values of freedom, of fairness, of justice, of liberty, and of cooperation. And not as shrines to values of despotism, cronyism, and coercive government. I uh, time, sir. Time. Okay. Let me summarize in that regard. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, clearly, there's evidence that some states wanted to sir. secede because of recession. I mean, because of it's Sir, you need, you need to move on. I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. Right. All right. Hi, my name is Shante. I grew up here in Richmond. Um, as a small child, I saw these statues on Monument, thank you, on Monument Avenue, and I just assumed that they were such great men. But as I got older, I went to school and started learning about these men, and learning about that history hurts. Going by those statues every day when I come home from work hurts. It, and I cannot be the only person of color to feel this way. Um, we came to this horrible realization that the city is content with honoring these traitors rather than trying to include the POCs of the city and the, of the state. I think simply putting context on these statues is basically putting a band-aid on an already deeply infected wound. The only way that we can clean this wound out is to remove these statues, place them in a museum where you can fully display the full context of these statues and these men and what they were standing for. Um, I think no amount of signage is gonna make it work, so I have some suggestions so that we can make Monument Avenue a lot more inclusive for people of color. And I think we should add statues to it in place of those that are already there. I recommend a statue for John uh, Mitchell Jr. He was a former slave. He became a journalist for the Richmond plant, writing about lynchings across Virginia. He founded and was the president of the Mechanics Savings Bank. He elected to Richmond City Alderman and was a civil rights pioneer. I recommend Elizabeth Van Lue. She was an abolitionist, a philanthropist, 
and she built and operated a spiring during the Civil War. She was appointed Postmaster General of Richmond, and she was inducted into the Military Intelligence Hall of Fame. The last person I recommend is Re Rebecca Lee Conkler. She was the first African-American woman to become a physician in the United States, and she published the first book called A Book of Medical Discourses in 1883, which is the first book by an African-American about um, medical issues. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I, uh, like the uh, early young woman earlier, I am uh, a newcomer to Richmond, having come here only in 1973. So, uh, and, and Virginia, and especially Richmond, loves its symbols, its heritage, its history. But the concept of history is, as we know now, much more complex than we used to think. No more does any real historian subscribe to the Dunning School of History that talked about how uh, things were so nice before the war and how um, slaves did just what little work the Massa asked them to, as Thomas Nelson Page wrote in his uh, uh, book, Mars Time. Uh, that idea that it was just happiness and wonderfulness and that there were regiments of happy African Americans going off to build the fortifications in Fort Harrison. Uh, through no choice of their own, that we might add for those folks. The history is complex, and let us understand that history is a modern concept since the 19th century, and is ever changing. There is no such thing, ultimately, as the truth. There is no solid truth. There is always that context that truth itself changes. The facts do remain the same. And the fact is, in 1890, um, the Lee statue was uh, unveiled. Uh, it was unveiled through a lot of work, through African Americans who were not celebrated and who were not recognized. Frederick Douglass himself excoriated the uh, uh, building of that statue, and yet that history is not remembered. That is part of that statue's history. Let us add that. Let us make sure that that uh, history is taught. Let us make sure that Thank you, history Joe. is yeah, taught. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, just hold. we got to wrap and up. That, and that we ultimately don't erase history, but we understand it and celebrate it. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Megan Reimer, and I am a fourth grade uh, Virginia Studies teacher right here in Richmond City. Um, about 100% of my students are African American and live in poverty. And one of the challenges I have is teaching my students about slavery when all around us there are these icons that have promoted it and have um, supported the ideals of. A, a group of people that push down the ancestors of my students. And the context that we would need, like the last gentleman just said, with, would be putting up signs around the Lee Memorial. But maybe similar to what they have at Monticello is the Slavery of Monticello app. And it, it explains the, the statues, it explains um, shows them pictures of how they were built, where they came from, but it does give that history. And I think that if we, if we removed the statues, I think that would just, it would be disastrous. And I think that we, the history of these statues and the history of the Confederacy, it starts with how we teach our kids. And if we are teaching our kids that owning another person is was okay back then, that's how they're going to grow up to think. And it, essentially, I think that some sort of app, some sort of um, signage, I think, or Confederate Avenue signage that explains it is essential. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker. Um, I am a, a homeowner here in the city, um, and I just want to point out, and I understand that these are two questions we've been asked to answer, but I want to just say that I think that history will um, reveal, um, or you know, we're cementing in this moment the fact that um, one option was removed or never considered. I mean, we're never asked to consider removal. Um, we just went straight to context. And I think by doing so, you eliminated a whole group of opinions, a whole group of constituents who 
I mean, at least put it on the table. I mean, what is the threat to having a full-blown conversation about it? I've been almost inspired by a lot of the stories I've heard as to why it's it, it could be beneficial to leave those statues there, but I do think that we missed a great discussion to include people who we could have started from, you know, everyone's perspective instead of just those, you know, just kind of in the middle. We're asked to choose from the lesser of two evils. Thank you. Cynthia Shellhorse, and I hate to admit the fact that after teaching for 47 years in Niagara County, there was an awful lot about Monument Avenue history that I didn't pay attention to. Growing up in Richmond, I saw the statues and they were very beautiful. By the way, I will stick to the subject tonight. Context. I would love to see signs, sort of like the highway markers, that give the history of the person, the time, the events. Not political, as somebody said, facts. Tell the history, the good and the bad. PBS had a program on just the other night where a gentleman listed the benefits or how Britain had, what's the word, how Britain had gotten money from slavery until it was abolished in 1834. And it came from having slaves in the cotton field, in the cane fields of Jamaica and Barbados. And a lot of British aristocracy now live in wonderful houses built on the backs of slaves. Irish that, slaves. That was a, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Right. The Irish weren't Please. slaves, Excuse. they were indentured servants. Please. Excuse Please. Me. Please, stop, That's just stop. Right. She's speaking. That's okay. Her. That's, That's okay. okay. That's all right. Uh, these were slaves that were sold from black African slaves that were sold by the Portuguese, according to the gentleman. Uh, it was a it was an eye opening and a mind opening story article that he did. And although I would hate to hear it, I would like to see it now on Monument Avenue. Context. You have okay. to tell the truth of all of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Chuck Richardson. I'm a former member of Richmond City Council. I don't expect any applause. <laughs> Stop talking a bit about my time. I've been to meetings this, to this, like this before, but the more important meetings I was in was in 1980 when we were quiet. We didn't announce it to the public, and they were about the statues on Monument Avenue. And people like Jim Wheat, who was a blind city councilman, Dale Wiley, Walter Kenny, former mayor, Clarence Towns, Reverend Miles Jones, these were distinguished, important citizens of Richmond who didn't announce it to public that we were talking about this issue because it was too volatile. I have this information. Most of those men were dead, are dead. And I was so young then and impressionable, and I had a tempestuous heart, and I wanted to do something. They all told me to be quiet, little Chucky. <laughs> I am now 70 years old, and the only thing left are my memories. And I couldn't possibly impart to you all of the stories and the feelings, and those intelligent men fell out and used language you wouldn't believe over this issue. And I'll tell you one small story, and I know I'm going to go over time because I only have 27 seconds. But when I was in Vietnam, two men, one was black and one was white, and a white man had an emblem on his helmet, and it was a Confederate flag. They got to argue over the Confederate flag. And two days later, we were shipped to the Quezon Valley. We got to fight. And the black man ran up over the embankment and got shot. We ran up and dragged him back. And the white man was crying over him because his best buddy that he loved was dying in his arms. And he took his helmet and threw it aside and it rolled upright with the Confederate flag showing. And he said, why was he so angry over that Confederate flag? I said, because what it meant to him and black folk was different from what it meant to you. What it meant to you was gallant soldiers running up hills in the face of fire, 
firing their pistols, waving their swords in the face of cannon fire, brave men courageous. I said, but what it meant to black folk were women being raped. It meant men being beaten till the skin rolled off of their bones. Children being sold from their mothers, never being seen again. We see different things and it hurts us. And if we come together and understand that what you do in the past, your heritage, men are imperfect. And if you acknowledge through all of your arrogance and haughtiness that you made a mistake, we want to forgive you and you need to ask forgiveness and if the sons and daughters of former slave owners and the sons and daughters of former slaves can come together with a willingness to say God made people imperfect, let us understand it, recognize it, because that man told me in that field that if getting along with you in the future means I have to let go of part of my past, it's worth it, Brother Chuck, because I love you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rebecca Keel. Um, I am a social worker. I am a conflict resolution facilitator, and I'm a lifelong Richmond resident. Um, so I work with a, a group of young folks. They are athletes. They are artists. They are advocates. And most importantly, in this conversation, they are young black kids who go to Richmond public schools, who live in public housing, who, when well, so we watched the documentary uh, 13th recently. Folks have seen it, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. Um, the takeaway message they got from uh, that as we had in conversation was around white supremacy. Now what it is for young black kids to understand white supremacy and to see these statues representing a legacy of folks who have enslaved their ancestors, who have enslaved their, their bloodline. So I have a feeling that this commission is not going to remove the statues, which I personally advocate for for the sake of conflict resolution and compromise that we, as a very racially divided city, have to meet. I will say my recommendation for keeping up the statues is to show and showcase liberated and emancipated African Americans and other people of color in, in on Monument Avenue, on Boulevard. I really like that uh, suggestion earlier, but to extend it and to show that black folks were triumphant and not there's been a lot of conversation about uh, Confederate soldiers. I mean, let's think about like Stockholm Syndrome and the fact that folks were like desperate, absolutely desperate to do what they had to do for their families and survival. So I would probably not commemorate those folks in such a triumphant way as folks have suggested, but I do think we need to pay homage to soldiers who fought in the, um, in the Civil War on, on all sides. Um, lastly, the city is going to have to come to a compromise, and that is what it is. Um, it's unfortunate because personally I do advocate for Monument Avenue taking down the Confederate statues, but again, for the sake of peace and conflict resolution, let's really come to some compromise, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Chambliss, and I am a native of Richmond, actually the, the birthplace of Richmond in, in historic full. I'm also a 20-year Army uh, retired reef with five combat years, tours under my belt. I've uh, served the Commonwealth of Virginia for another 20 years as a Veterans Affairs Certified Official for Virginia Commonwealth University, as well as um, a regional manager for the Department of Veterans Affairs, state approved agency, and I was a docent at the Virginia War Memorial. I um, take a stance, public stance here, to say that I'm in support of removal and replacement of the statues on Monument Avenue. Now, I'm saying that. I realize that's not a popular stance to take, but that's where I stand. I also am a member of the Historic Fulton Memorial Park Committee, as well as the Historic Fulton Legacy Committee. And we currently have a park in the eastern part of the city that would be breaking ground hopefully in the spring of 2018. Being that the most iconic figure of Richmond, Virginia that I'm aware of is also a person that originated from this community, and his name was Vice Admiral Samuel L. Brady. It is a disgrace that this city has only two monikers that I know of that re recognize this. It's the Cockburn <coughs> Street, but it used to be State Street in Fulton, and also it's a 
stone monitor in the Virginia War Memorial with one of his famous scenes. So I suggest that we, uh, I would recommend that we either build a statue to have it erected on Monument Avenue, or maybe better yet, on the riverfront where he was from in historic pools and to commemorate his accomplishments. Thank you, sir. Thank you.